We are here with our very good friend, Dr. Pramod Kosla. Doctor, good to see you again. Good to see you, Ray. What's new? What's new and exciting? Uh, what's new and exciting? Well, I got a haircut and oh, I'm yeah. getting old, but other than that, <laughs> not much. <laughs> Listen, we've talked over the years and have discussed the importance of palm oil and its benefits for heart health. For our viewing audience, uh, please give us a review of what palm oil is. Palm oil, Ray, for your audience, and just to recap, is the leading edible oil in the world. Uh, there's 17 oils and fats that we use globally, and the top two, which account for about 60% of the market, are palm oil and soybean oil, and palm oil is number one. So in terms of production, it's the number one oil. In terms of the oils that are exported, because a lot of the soybean oil that's grown is used locally, so in terms of what's left for export, palm oil accounts for more than half. Um, in terms of yield, palm oil is one of the highest yielding oils there is. Uh, the yield per hectare is something like 10 times what it is for soybean oil and what it is for rapeseed oil or canola. So in terms of um, being able to feed the world, palm oil is extremely important because you can grow an awful lot mm -hmm. in very little land. And land is scarce nowadays, mm -hmm. as we know. So talk to us about uh, saturated fats. Go into that for us. All right. Well, saturated fat, uh, one type of fat. Um, we have access to saturated, monounsaturated, and polyunsaturated fats, which basically uh, differ in their chemical and physical properties. Uh, physical properties we would usually refer to as, uh, let's say, hardness at room temperature. So you might have something which is a solid fat, something which is sort of semi-solid um, or a liquid. So saturates, monounsaturates, and polyunsaturates give their... Um, a specific physical characteristic to the fat. Inside the body, they do various things. Um, they're involved in all sorts of reactions inside the body. We need fat to absorb fat-soluble vitamins. Um, we need fat as an essential part of the diet because there are certain types of fatty acids. That's what fats are made of. So there are certain types of fatty acids that we have to have in the diet because the body cannot make them. Mm -hmm. Saturated fat itself, the body can make actually. So I've been here many years saying that, you know, if the body can make saturated fat, well, it can't be all that bad, right? Um, so in terms of fat specifically, it's an essential nutrient. We need fat for absorption of fat-soluble vitamins. It contains essential fatty acids. And, of course, the biggest thing about fat that most people um, are aware of is that it gives us calories. It gives us more calories per gram than either carbohydrate or proteins. So that's a sort of a simple nutshell. And if you look at it in terms of what goes on inside the body, every single cell, every single cell membrane has fat in there. Mm -hmm. So fat is an integral part of life. Yeah. It's important for us then to, to function properly is in a healthy manner to have those kinds of fats. Absolutely. You have to have um, a certain type of fat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, tell us, are there any new studies and understanding uh, of the importance of saturated fats? Is there anything new coming out? In fact, Ray, there's been a lot of interesting developments over the last two years. Uh, for many years, we've been told to decrease fat, decrease saturated fat because of the potential link to heart disease. Uh, and so a lot of the dietary guidelines over the years have been, you know, decrease fat, decrease saturated fat. But there were always scientists who were sort of skeptical about that, that, you know, that's a very simplistic argument. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't just say that. And so a lot of people, myself included, have sort of um, argued over the years that, you know, saturated fat per se is not an issue as long as it's a, you know, it's in the diet in a balanced proportion, if mm -hmm. you like. You know, as long as you're eating a healthy diet, there's a certain amount of saturated fat that you can have and it will not be an issue. So what's happened over the last couple of years that several studies have come out which have essentially been meta-analysis. So they've sort of taken human studies from, which are published from around the world and sort of combined them and done one big analysis mm -hmm. um, to increase the power of the study. And what they're showing is that what we've been saying about saturated fat that, you know, it's bad for you in terms of its ability to increase heart disease, well, that's actually not the case. So several studies have come out showing that saturated fat may not be linked to heart disease at all. Now, that's not to say that you suddenly go and start consuming saturated fat. It's simply pointing out that the whole issue of diet and heart health is a lot more complicated than just picking on one component and saying, you know, this is the culprit. So these meta-analyses are saying that if you look at uh, the role of saturated fat in heart disease, you don't necessarily find any relationship. Mm -hmm. Before, it was thought that saturated fat increased heart disease risk. Mm -hmm. That's not to say 
it decreases risk. It's simply saying that we're not really finding any association. So it's not as bad as we thought for all these years. So as consumers then, uh, what new research should be should we be aware of in, as consumers of okay. getting this kind of, I guess what I'm asking is getting the correct information. What should be, we be looking out for? All right. So what you should be looking out for, of course, is one needs to uh, heed the science. And the science is changing. Uh, it's taken 50 years. And we're now at a stage where we're saying, well, you know, we need to maybe have a, a, a rethink about the issue. In terms of simplistic messages and what this new research is leading to, I think what the research is leading to is that you cannot be giving very simple messages. If you tend to demonize a specific food or a nutrient, yeah. we tend to lose focus. So all these years, it, the focus was fat, decreased fat, decreased saturated fat. If you tell the average person to decrease fat or decrease saturated fat, there are certain foods that they will think of as having fat, but fat is ubiquitous. So they don't necessarily know what to remove. And then when they're removing fat, remember at the beginning I said some fat is essential. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when they were removing fat, cutting back on fat, they were also maybe removing some of the essential fats. So what the new research is showing is that rather than focus on telling people to decrease fat, decrease saturated fat, while that may be important, what's more important is watching out what you replace that with. So if I tell oh, you to decrease point. fat, yeah. Yeah. So if I tell you to decrease fat and you decrease fat, what if you replace it with sugar? Mm -hmm. What if you replace <laughs> it with simple <laughs> carbohydrates, refined carbohydrates? Are you going to be any better off? The evidence is actually showing no. So if you replace saturated fat from your diet with refined carbohydrates, simple carbohydrates, you know, basically sugar, you're actually worse off. Now, if you replace that saturated fat with unsaturated fat, then you will have an advantage. Going back to the carbohydrate thing, if you replace the saturated fat with complex carbohydrates, the effects you're going to see are going to be different than if you replace it with simple carbohydrates. Mm. What if you don't replace it with anything? What if you just cut fat out? Then, of course, now you're affecting calorie intake. So the simplistic message of focusing on fat sort of has taken away from all these other things. People tend to think, you know, if I take away fat, well, that's it, I'm done. Yeah. Well, no, you have to pay attention to everything else because... Yes, fat is gone, but what's come in place? That's a really great point that you make because, as you well know, in this country, we're obsessed with, uh, with, uh, with weight. We, uh, we have a lot of people that uh, are overweight, a lot of people that are underweight because they take away the fat, but they don't replace it with anything. And when they replace it, they might be replacing it with something they end up eating more of because, remember, fat's got more calories than carbohydrate. So if you take the fat out, one of the positive things about fat is that it gives you a sense of fullness. Mm -hmm. It gives you the satiety effect. So you take the fat out, you feel hungry. And you tend to compensate by overeating. And it might be you're overeating a complex, not complex, sorry, simple carbohydrates. So if you look historically over the last 20, 30 years, maybe 40 years, we've been telling people to decrease fat. They've decreased fat, but we've increased obesity. Mm -hmm. So clearly something was not right. And that's because when people decreased the fat, they replaced it with something else. They thought it was great, and they could eat. Um, it's a funny story. It, it's, it's amazing how media drives these things. Yes. There yeah. was a time when, you know, when fat was demonized, mm -hmm. so decreased fat. So a packet of sugar was fat-free, and you could promote <laughs> that. Right. And then we switched to this, uh, you know, low-carb craze. A bottle of oil was carb-free. So it, marketing, confusing the public relatively straightforward uh, that, that leads me to my next question here for you and your expert opinion then um, are people's understandings and attitudes about palm oil better today than they were a few years ago or even uh, six months ago as far as palm oil concerned definitely there's been a tremendous shift over the years I can remember I've been in this field since around um, 1990s well actually early 1980s mm -hmm. um, and since sort of late 1980s, when I really got involved in palm oil research, the opinions on palm oil were relatively negative. Mm -hmm. But over the years, there's been a, dram a dramatic shift because, A, we've learned about c carbohydrates, simple carbohydrates, and, of course, we've learned about trans fats, which, you know, we've discussed on numerous occasions before. So a lot of the people now realize that trans fats are an issue, that simple carbohydrates are an issue, obesity is an issue. And going after individual oils, that's not really an issue, as long as they're part of a healthy diet, right? We've said this all along. If you're having palm oil or any, any food can be incorporated into a healthy diet. Mm -hmm. 
you know, the foods that are so-called bad, you just eat less of them. Mm -hmm. And the foods that are so-called good, you eat more of them. So any food is, is there. Uh, palm oil is concerned. Palm oil is now in so many processed foods globally. I think there's a statistic that something like 10 to 20% of all the processed foods contain some amount of palm oil for um, stability purposes. Mm -hmm. So the, sh the thinking has changed. And I would say nowadays people actually don't really pay attention to what the fat is. They're looking for unsaturated fats. They may be looking for complex carbohydrates. Whole grains is a big buzzword, right? So we talk about whole grains, fruits and vegetables. Those have always been there and they're still there. And people are paying more attention to that rather than individual nutrients or brand names, whatever the case may be. And people are, are more label conscious too. People are label conscious. Some of them, I must confess. Um, there are plenty of people who still don't you know, fully understand the label. But yes, the fact that people are paying more attention is a good thing. What new developments in palm oil research are coming that will give us an even better understanding of the benefits of palm oil? Um, well, I work in the fatty acid field. So from my perspective, one of the things is that uh, fats are made up of molecules we call triglycerides, which is basically, think of the a capital, uppercase E. So your backbone is a molecule of glycerol, and then we have three fatty acids, sort of the three arms of the E. Mm -hmm. What we're now paying attention to is that the position of a fat on this E molecule is very important. So here's your E. So whether this has a saturated fat or this position or that position is very important. It depends where the unsaturated fat is. So we're now paying attention not just to saturates and unsaturates. We're now beginning to pay attention to the position that this saturated fat has on a molecule. And I think that's a big a development. I shouldn't say a development. It's been around, but more research is being done on what we call triglyceride structure. And so that will lead to um, new discoveries, help us understand uh, the mechanism of how fat works in the body. The other thing as far as palm oil is concerned are the micronutrients, which um, you've had you know, other speakers come on this platform to talk about, the tocotrienols and the carotenoids that are present in palm oil. The fact that they're now being extracted, they're sold separately. So those are interesting developments. And there, of course, is that red palm oil where you can enrich with some of these micronutrients. So those things are there. Uh, the quantity of palm oil is going up and up. More and more people use it. Mm -hmm. So the future is certainly rosy as far as palm oil it, is concerned. It looks good. And I, and I think there's so many uh, factors involved with this. But I think uh, people's consciousness about how healthy palm oil is and the benefits of it uh, and, uh, are really helping out. That's right. That's right. People are aware because they're not just looking at fat specifically as a fat. They're looking at, well, is there something else in there? You know, if I'm going to be eating fat, is, is there a particular advantage from a certain type of fat? Can I adjust my diet accordingly? You know, for some uh, food formulations, you can only use certain types of fat. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I can't imagine you having your morning toast and you pour a liquid oil on it. I mean, <laughs> that's certainly not going to help. Um, similarly, you don't want a runny chocolate bar. Right. right. So there are certain foods that are going to use certain types of fats. That's always going to be there. So the trick, as always, is to make sure that your overall diet is healthy. And the simple message is uh, Harvard School of Public Health has been touting them. Various agencies have been touting them for ages is, you know, look for whole grains, fruits and vegetables, bright colored um, fruits. Pay attention to complex carbohydrates. Stay away from the refined sugars, refined carbohydrates. And, of course, trans fats, for right. which we have legislation in place. Any last thoughts? Anything you'd like to uh, share with our viewers? Uh? Exercise. Mm -hmm. we, you mentioned about obesity and, you know, any type of activity that you engage in, however infrequent that might be, is something that you should, um, you know, encourage. If we've become a nation of couch potatoes, well, maybe all of us can do something to try to counter that. I know it's not easy, given that today's age we've got handheld devices where we can do <laughs> literally anything we want. We don't have to go to the libraries, we don't have to walk, but... Virtual yeah, exercise. That's right. <laughs> uh, that's a good one. Virtual yeah. exercise. I haven't thought of that one. Uh, that's yeah. a good one. So I think the whole thing is we are more conscious of our lifestyle, and we should just continue that way. Dr. Kosla, I'd like to thank you for uh, joining us again. It's been really great seeing you. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been here with Dr. Pramod Kosla, the American Palm Oil Council, exhibit booth at Natural Products Expo 2011.